Good morning. I'm Dr. Peter Pococo. I want to take a moment right now and talk to you a little bit about inflammation. I'm about to do a small series, as you'll see on this webpage, on uh, different clinical conditions. And what I wanted you to know is that everything I talk about, whether it's cardiovascular disease, autoimmune disease, uh, gastrointestinal dysfunction, some neurological disorders, it doesn't matter what they are. Every one of these disorders all share the same underlying principle. They're all based on inflammation. People hear that word a lot but really don't know what it means. They kind of have that understanding maybe that inflammation is when you roll your ankle and it swells up, you know, real big. That's inflammation. Well, it is. <clears throat> but what is it that's going on in the body that produces inflammation? And just for this brief moment, I just want to get you started on uh, where I'm about to go with the rest of the video. So, inflammation is this. Think about it in your blood. Your blood has, let's just call it three main components, if you will, from the cell perspective. It's got red blood cells, <clears throat> which carry oxygen and carbon dioxide to and from your body. It takes good oxygen to the body so that you can have oxygen in your muscles and in your organs and skin and all your tissues. And then after it uses that oxygen, your body, it gives off carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide jumps back onto the red blood cell again, and then it goes back to the heart and lungs, and it just keeps exchanging oxygen and carbon dioxide. That's your red blood cells. <clears throat> By the way, why is blood red? Because there's a lot of red blood cells in the blood. Second thing, and probably the most important one, is the white blood cells. And those white blood cells are your, your immune system. The immune system is key. Without it, we die. So immune cells, the job of the immune cells is to circulate through your body and find, or should I say, search and destroy on things that it doesn't like. I'll give you a quick and easy indication. Uh, a bacteria or a virus has entered into your system. If you see bacteria, or if your immune system sees bacteria and virus, it attacks it, kills it, absorbs it, gets rid of it. We need this, otherwise we get sick. So the third thing that is in our blood is our um, platelets. And platelets are interesting little creatures. They run around and kind of bind onto your red blood cells and your white blood cells. It kind of binds the whole thing together. So like when you get cut and you begin to bleed, it starts to slowly coagulate or make a little bit of a clot on your skin. That's the platelets doing that job. They're kind of putting everything together, making your blood sticky enough so that you can get over and, uh, or should I say, you can stop bleeding. So those are the components of blood. Now, sure, there's serum and there's non-serum and there's a whole bunch of other parts to it, but just for our conversation today, there's three main things in blood, white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. I'm not worried about the red blood cells right now, not worried about the platelets right now, just want to talk about those white blood cells. Think about your white blood cells as uh, the United States military. The United States military has four main branches, right? You got the Navy, the Army, the Marines, and uh, Army, Navy, Marines, and Air Force. Okay, so if you saw each one, a soldier from each one of those branches, if you saw them in uniform, you'd probably know how to identify them, especially in their dressed up stuff. You can tell the difference between a guy who's in the Navy compared to a guy who's going to be in the Marines. If you just see them in their uniforms, you know the difference. Come on, I don't care who you are. And as many times as you've seen them, you know. Well, that same thing can be said about the white blood cell system of your immune, of your immune system. When research scientists, or any scientist, looks under a microscope, he, can look, he or she can look inside the microscope and see the cell and identify who is that cell. Is it Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine? Remember that all of those branches of the military have weapons, and those weapons can destroy an enemy. So the immune system is the same thing. There's multiple different types of cells from a different branch of the armed service, if you will, and they have their own types of ammunition and weapons to kill anything in its way. So this is kind of cool. So in your white blood cell system, there are lots of types. I'm going to give you some names, just in case you've heard of these before. It'll be kind of fun for you. There are neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, uh, T helper cells. There's Th1 and Th2 helper cells. There are natural killer cells. There are a lot of different types of cells within the immune system. Now, if you see an immunologist or a rheumatologist, 
maybe you have rheumatoid arthritis or some autoimmune disorder. How do they know what you have? How do they figure it out? They simply look at what, number one, what can they notice under the microscope? What kind of cells are in that particular specimen that they're looking at? Not only that, but they're going to look at the weapons that are being used, or in this case, the chemicals being used by those immune cells. So, if you have asthma, it's probable that you have a large complement of mast cells which secrete a chemical or one of their weapons called histamine. And if the histamine becomes very um, activated from the mast cell, then you get bronchoconstriction, which is it kind of closes down your airways. Anybody who's asthmatic knows that. And what do we take for those? Generally, antihistamines. We're trying to get at least those white blood cells that secrete the histamine to calm down so they don't go crazy. So looking at inflammation, um, I'm going to give you a simple, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm going to give you a simple uh, indication of, uh, uh, what the heck is the word I'm looking for? Example. My goodness, Sunday morning, you know, what are you going to do? Um, a specific example. So let's talk about it. Let's say you do roll your ankle. You twist your ankle and you hear something go crunch and within an hour or so, it's a big, fat, painful ankle. It's in a lot of pain. What has happened? Well, anytime you have tissue destruction due to an injury, we need to get white blood cells down there quickly for a couple of reasons. We need to protect the area because bacteria loves damaged tissue. Staphylococcus bacteria, all different types of bacteria, they love that area. And they want to use that to get into your body and cause destruction, and in some cases, even death. So your immune system gets down there at first. Um, who is it? The, uh, the mast cell, I guess, the same, same guy. Mast cell gets in there and says, oh, we've got destruction in here. What, what are we going to do? So it starts secreting its histamine. Histamine then dilates the blood vessels, and it brings a whole bunch of swollen bach into that ankle so that you, the, the, the person who's in pain, they want you in pain, lots of pain, so you don't move it. Initially, that you allow it a moment for the immune system to do its job, which is to come into that area. There's these other cells called macrophage white cells. They'll come in and they'll eat up all the debris and all that junk that's happened from the tissue destruction and help the repair process. While the mast cells are in there secreting histamine, making sure that everything hurts so you don't move it at all. And then you have other cells that come in, your natural killer cells and your T lymphocytes. They get in there and then they shoot and kill any bacteria that are trying to get in. And this goes on for a period, of, you know, if you ever had a rolled ankle, depending on the severity of the tissue trauma, could last for a day or, you know, if it's a, a day, no, no, probably not, uh, a couple of days, anyway, all the way to four to six weeks, depending on how much damage you have. But the immune system eventually will heal that and then it'll go back to doing what it naturally does, which is going through your body and circulating all over the place, much like um, antiviral software on your computer. It's constantly looking for threats and it's taking care of them. When the immune system functions normally, wow, we have a level of inflammation which is very, very small. Unfortunately, this is not the reality for most of us. The reality is that inflammation starts to develop in places where we don't recognize it, like in the stomach. It starts in the GI tract, and then that inflammation is associated with maybe something you ate. Maybe it's associated with an allergy that you have. And now you've eaten that allergen food, and your immune system doesn't like it, and it begins to start a fight with it. And that's going on in your body. Then it can go into your blood and it can circulate around and it can bind into your brain and cause the brain to be upset and get that more inflamed in that area with the immune system. It can then go to your lungs and cause asthma. It can go to your knees and your ankles and cause arthritis. It can go to your thyroid and cause thyroid disease and weight gain. Holy moly, I hope now you're getting it, that the immune response in our body is called inflammation. Even though it may not look or feel like a swollen ankle after you wrecked it, it's, a, it's an underlying inflammatory condition from the immune system creating that and your body is reacting so poorly from this that you wind up over time developing disease. And that disease, cardiovascular disease, uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, thyroid disease, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, 
uh, uh, scleroderma to uh, systemic lupus erythematosus to uh, cancer to you name it every single disease known to man at its basic foundation is associated with inflammation and it's up to your physician me being one of them to be able to help define where is this inflammation coming from what is the thing that's inciting the inflammation and what can we do to reduce this inflammation so that you can break away from disease cure your symptoms and get back to living a healthier lifestyle so inflammation is going to be the underlying principle that every doctor is seeing. I don't care if you go to a neurologist, a cardiologist, an oncologist, an endocrinologist, uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever ologist that you're seeing, they are all seeing the same thing. All seeing the same thing. Now, a cardiologist might only look at the heart and see the inflammation. But if you have inflammation associated with your cardiovascular system, they call it cardiovascular disease. But that inflammation may be seen by the endocrinologist who's looking at your asthma, but never relates the asthma to the cardiovascular disease. It's the same immune system that's dysfunctional. It's creating both, in, it's both problems. Now let's add cancer and um, an autoimmune disease like uh, multiple sclerosis. Do they have any connection? Of course they do. They're still associated with the immune system and that inflammatory response that comes from it. Remember that inflammation can be a, a massive acute response. I'll give you a simple indication of an inflammatory response. You have a shellfish allergy and just ate shrimp. You eat the shrimp, what happens? Boof! You feel your immune system kick in at once. Your throat tightens up, your skin's itchy, face bloats up. You may you know, progress to anaphylaxis where you can't breathe. You wind up in an emergency room and they give you these new age molecules like prednisone and anti-inflammatories that quickly affect your immune system so that you don't die. This is pretty important. Apologize for the uh, for the sirens. I'm sitting here in my office on a Sunday morning, uh, and uh, that's going to happen. Anyway, so you have to remember the one thing that you have to be doing at home is recognizing what produces my inflammation and how do I reduce that. And I'm not talking about taking medication. Medication does not get rid of the reason it's there, the inflammation, but it might, for a short period of time, reduce its effects on your body. But something is wrong that's leading you towards this ugly progressive stage of disease and it's inflammation. So watch whichever video you want because you're going to see a bunch of them at, at the bottom of this page now. I, I suggest you watch them all because everything I talk about is going to be specific to let's say some sort of tissue whether I talk about cholesterol, I talk about autoimmune, or I talk about gut. Everything that I talk about, the underlying principle is going to be inflammation. And in the world of what I do in my practice is functional medicine where I use the world, the environment, and what has been selected for us for millions of years for the human body. I'm going to take those types of um, ingredients and I'm going to create a program for the individual, you maybe, maybe somebody else you know, that will help lower the inflammation response while teaching you how to control your inflammation by living a healthy lifestyle. If you do that, you can be healthy. If you don't do that, you're going to chase symptoms forever. You're going to spend a lot of time and a lot of money going to medical offices having some symptom addressed when the underlying cause is inflammation. So sit back now, check out any one of these videos, and remember, inflammation in the immune system is the reason you're feeling crappy to begin with.